Amen. It is a great day. It's great to see all of you here this morning, also online. I'm glad you're with us today. Wherever you are in the world, would you stand with us together? Let's sing this song together, please.
Good morning, you may be seated. Happy Mother's Day. I'm gonna join everyone who's already said that to you. Um, It's interesting when um, Marcy, my assistant, and I were talking about videos, I had sent her this video that opened our service this morning. And she said, no, no, I'm looking for the video called Just Leave Me Alone. (laughs) I thought she was serious, and so I was looking for it for at least a half hour because that sounded like what some moms might say. We are so grateful for all of you who are moms, and we're grateful for our mothers, some of whom have gone on to be with the Lord, uh, we're grateful for the fact that they have poured into us, and so we celebrate you today. Thank you for the way that you love and care for your families. We know it's not easy. I, I, I told my mom this yesterday. It's, it was never easy, and it's still not easy for my mom. And yet we, we look forward to saying to them, we love you, thank you for the gift that God has given to us through you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, today we have declared who you are, our Lord, our God, and we have hailed you as King of the universe. And we are so grateful for your design for our lives. Thank you so much for the gift that you have given us and our parents, particularly our moms that we celebrate today. And we ask that you would pour out your strength, your comfort, and joy into the hearts and lives of all who are moms here and with us online. Lord, we pray that you would continue to remind us of the gift that they are to us. Show us how we can add value into them. Lord, we pray this day, as we think about family, that you would open our eyes and our hearts to what it means to live our lives for your glory, to build our homes in a way that honors you. And Lord, we're asking today even that you would pour out your spirit of comfort upon those whose homes have been rocked this week by difficulty and struggle, even death. And we pray in these moments together, your voice will be the clearest voice we hear, that we'll hear truth from your word, And we pray, O Lord, you would help us to know you better and to make you known. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen.
pray that you are lifted up and that we hold to your promise that you work all things good to the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Stories told of 
a ship that was out in the ocean passing a remote island, and the captain of the ship noticed that there was a man stranded there. And he was all by himself, and he decided he would rescue him. So he uh, goes on a boat and, and reaches the man on the island. And while he's there, he notices that there are three huts. And so he asks the man, well, what are the three huts for? And the man said, well, the first one is my house, and the second one is my church, and the third one is the church I used to go to before I built the, the second one. And, uh, and when we get into a series like we're about to embark upon, I can become concerned that you might start looking for another hut. Uh, but I hope that you're a person who's up for a challenge and wants to have God's word, God's spirit inform your life in every area of your life. We just sang a song that says, in all I do, I honor you. And that's what we want these moments to be about and, and so our house, building it the way God intended, is a series that we want to carry on from today, Mother's Day, through Father's Day in June, and unpack some helpful things in the Bible to in, uh, inform our family life. Now, when we talk about family, I'm talking about singles, married, people with children, grandparents, uh, people with three dogs, two cats, and a bird, all of the people who have a home to live in and, and are trying to make that home a place where God is honored. I mean, I'm telling you, the Bible has a lot to say about family, and I'm hoping you'll be here to learn and apply these principles to your family experience. So today, if you have your Bible or a device with the Bible on it, I encourage you to be a part of this today, going to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to begin our series there. We hope that you'll do that with us uh, online at home as well. Now, while you're turning to 1 Corinthians 3, um, I, let me just give you a little background. These Corinthian Christians needed a lot of help. Uh, they had a lot of issues. And Paul wanted to deal with the misinformation that they were receiving. So you thought that that was just Twitter that there were a lot of false teachers who had come into this community, and Paul had a lot of cleaning up to do in terms of what they were believing. His goal was to give them a firm foundation of truth with this letter. Now, we can use the same principles that he uses in the letter, talking about the church, in applying them to our family experience, and even our individual experience in our vertical relationship with God. And so with that in mind, uh, we'll begin reading with verse 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, before we can unpack the specifics that go into a family experience, whether that's a marriage or dealing with conflict or raising children or being children, uh, maybe that's how your family impacts the community or how you protect your family from things that don't belong in it. All of it has to start with this reality, with a foundation of who it is that we are going to build our house upon. Paul contends that we should be building it on Jesus Christ. Now, I want, to want you to understand where he's going with these first few words. Is that a solid family foundation starts with a solid faith in a solid source. I mean, you can see the word solid there because hopefully that's what our foundations are built upon, something solid. But the problem is, men and women, sometimes the basics seem to get away from us. And we can get into our routines of life and forget what our lives are really all about. Why were we, we created? Why do we live and breathe? We can think our lives are about possessions and seek fulfillment in the accumulation of stuff, more stuff, better stuff, cool stuff. 
Or we can think our lives are about associations. So more friends, better friends, cool friends. Or we can think our lives are about more activity for ourselves or our family. More teams, better clubs, cool groups. And, and we think that we're not like that, and yet if we're honest and look at our schedules and our resources and our focused attention, we might have to admit that we've allowed to, some of that to take priority over what is the main thing. And if I were to highlight specific stuff, friends or activities, your response might be, well, there's nothing wrong with those things. And I would say to you, I absolutely agree with that. I wholeheartedly think that those things are great for our life, except we can make these things the foundation of our lives, our time, our resources, our energy, and our focus, and forget why we exist on this earth. So Paul explains earlier in the chapter that he has to treat these adults like they're kids. He's got to treat them with all of the immaturity that they're demonstrating. He has to remind them of what's really important. And so men and women, I, I don't know if you're going to go to a different hut after this, but I want to challenge you to keep the important things important. Because these believers had their attention on all the wrong things. And he says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. In other words, I gave you what you need to start a meaningful life built on a solid foundation. And what is that foundation? He tells us, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, when we attribute our mere existence to the creator God, we build the rest of our lives on that reality and the reality that he just didn't um, poof us into being because he was bored one day. He has a purpose for your life, for our lives. And here's the issue. And the Corinthians were taught this. They knew this, but they started building their lives upon things that took their attention and focus away from their creator, away from their savior. So Paul wants to reiterate for them again, don't put your lives in the hands of anyone else but Jesus. That's why he had to remind them. But each one should be careful how he builds. They weren't careful. Instead, they were carelessly building their lives upon competing affections. The little gods in their lives that, they be, that began to take their attention away from the God. Now he tells us who that source is, Jesus Christ, and you might respond with the Corinthians, well, I believe in Jesus Christ, but there's a huge difference between believing in Jesus and building your entire life upon your belief in Jesus. Ask yourself, what is the foundation that I'm building my life upon? What is the foundation that I'm building the life of my family upon? A foundation of faith in Christ that I cultivate and focus upon, I spend time developing, I pass on to everyone in my family, is that the foundation I'm building upon, or is it just our Sunday mornings where we go to learn good values and then get back to work the next day? No, no, our foundation of faith thinks about Jesus before everyone else and everything else, not after. We think about Jesus and how we're going to apply him to all of those other areas of our life and make sure the world knows that he can help them. Now, in our house, in our physical house, we wanted to make sure that anybody who walked in our doors understood completely what it is our lives are built upon. So this is what we decided to do, is put scripture verses all over the walls all over the house. 
So right when you come in, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is there. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And then as you go up the stairs, Luke 1, 37, with God, all things are possible. And over the door that you come into, it's Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Those are just a few of them. But we want to make sure that we're reminded every day, this is what our life is about. This is what this house is going to be about, and everyone who lives in this house will be about. Now, you make it clear to yourself and to your family, I want my life to be built upon Jesus Christ, the foundation Everything I say and do, what I do in the home, what I do outside the home, I want it all to say to the world, I'm built upon my faith in him. And so we include those statements in, on our walls. The most important thing, though, isn't that you have them plastered on the walls. The most important thing is that you have that plastered on your heart. So the whole world can read what's going on in your house by the way you speak and act and your priorities and how you use your time and your resources. That's the foundation he's calling us to. But there's more to a house than a foundation. Let, let's keep reading verse 12 of 1 Corinthians 3. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. You see, families build quality homes when they use quality materials. And, and I think that that's important for us to understand because some of this sounds so elementary, so trivial, even as we apply the analogy to our faith, and yet you may remember what we started with. Sometimes we don't perfect the basics as we're building our homes. Paul moves from the foundation to the building materials. Now, you can establish a solid faith in a solid source and still not build your house with quality materials. If I'm building a house and use inferior materials, my house may settle poorly over time, it may need repairs sooner, or might be easily damaged when a storm hits it. So what does this building material analogy mean for me as I'm thinking about building my family? Well, as he does often, Paul uses exaggeration to make his point. And I think it's important to see here because who in this room has built their house with solid gold? Has anybody done that? Because I really want to go and see it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think too many people have. We could even reduce that to silver. Anybody build their house with silver? I mean, it, it, of course not. That would be amazing, though. I mean, but how, how about a little downgrade from there? Diamonds, rubies, sapphires. I want to see your sapphire front door. That would be amazing. But of course we don't do that. If you could afford to build your house with those things and you liked how it looked, maybe you would do it. But we typically wouldn't because the expense would be astronomical. To build with quality materials causes an increase in expense. And the question is, are we willing to pay the price for a house that's solid because we're willing to take the time and make the effort and the sacrifice. Paul's point is that we can build our lives and our churches and our families with strong and beautiful materials, the best materials. But what are those materials that he's talking about in this analogy? Well, if you read the entire letter, you would find a big list first of which is wisdom from God. Then he talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit, courageous faith, holiness, and purity. And then he emphasizes the importance of knowing the truth, knowing what is, in fact, the Word of God, reading it, applying it, teaching it, 
making it a priority in your life. And with that, then, he talks about the value of prayer, talking to God, listening to God, praying with your family, with your spouse, with your children, with your parents. He's talking about these important building materials that ultimately lead to an understanding that all human beings are equal in the sight of God. And getting that foundation put within your mind and in your heart that all people are valuable to God and should be valuable to you. So ultimately, he just continues with this materials list. The question is, am I going to pay the price and take the time and make the effort to dive into this word of truth so I know what those tools are and can apply them to my family life? Am I serious about this walk with Jesus? Or am I just fooling around building a hut? See, here's the danger. We can be duped into believing that other things are more important or better than these things. Now, if you look at the beginning of chapter 3, Paul bluntly tells them he can't call them spiritual because they are, and here's our English word for it, worldly. Worldly. Now, what is this word worldly? What does it mean? I mean, because some people see an advantage to being worldly wise. That's not it. No, he's talking about when we seek to be more connected to our culture, and our culture styles, and our pride, and our desire to lift up material things, that we be struggle to receive spiritual teaching and correction. I mean, teaching like this just falls on us like it falls on a piece of wood with a thud, because we can't get past all of our, his word, worldliness. And sometimes, being challenged with spiritual principles and challenged in how we're walking in our spiritual life, it can be difficult for us to receive. And so we put up our barriers and we throw our darts. You see, we can be busy together, perfecting the expectations of our culture rather than building our family on more eternal values. We can do a lot of good things, that develop character and attitude and perseverance. Sure, do all of those things. But when we substitute the gold, silver, and costly stones for wood, hay, and straw, we aren't building the best and strongest family that God intended for us. We're settling for something far less than he had designed when he created us. I have a friend that I play basketball with uh, weekly, and uh, one week we were, we were the ones waiting for the next game, and we began to talk, and he said that his daughter had gotten a Division I scholarship uh, to play volleyball, and, and uh, he was thrilled, free college. I mean, who doesn't love that, right? And, and he was celebrating that reality. He said, but then as she went through school, her junior year, she came home, and she had something to tell me. She sat me down for it, you know, and I'm thinking the worst. And it was the worst. Now, you might be thinking that, oh, well, she got pregnant, or she's on drugs, or whatever. She said, Dad, I've decided I no longer believe in God. And he said, I, it, it, it just, he said it was like fast, or fast rewind. Like I could see our lives. He said, I went clear back And he said, what I realized is I had given her everything she wanted. And I wanted to. I I was her dad. I loved her. I enjoyed that. And I made sure she was involved in everything that she wanted to be involved in, except I didn't build her faith. I didn't take her to worship services. And I didn't make sure she was connecting in our student ministry when she was growing up. She said, I allowed all of those other things to push out what was the most important, and now she's announcing to me she doesn't believe in God, and he looked right into my eyes and said, what do I do? Now, now men and women, this is what I'm talking about. Because while all of those things can be great and wonderful, 
The question is, will we make a solid faith in a solid source the foundation of our family life? And will that be first before all other things? And will that be the thing that informs all other things? Or will I get around to that if I have time left from all of the other stuff that I'm doing? The bottom line is, have I made the main thing the main thing? See, am I, lead, am I leading with wisdom and spiritual passion? Am I seeking to teach about Jesus Christ before I teach anything else? Am I laying a solid foundation of faith in Christ and then building on it with activities that increase my knowledge and my family's knowledge of him? Am I making him our foundation and building with these beautiful stones, these beautiful tools of a house? This, this means family leaders determine what is most important in their homes and develop in every individual in your family and puts those things first and then applies them to the other activities of life. Because, and here's Paul's promise, let's keep reading the second half of verse 13. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. And if what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. And if it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Men and women, he's simply telling us that a family's foundation will be revealed when their faith is tested by fire. And, and here's the point. It's coming. Be ready, because I'm telling you, bad stuff, hard stuff, challenging stuff, painful stuff is going to happen in your life. And you and the rest of the world is going to know immediately what is most important in your life. Your faith and your family's faith will be tested. You'll have sickness, maybe financial struggles, maybe disagreements, moral failures. You're going to experience deaths in your family. You might experience betrayals. I mean, you can name them. The fire is coming to test you. It's real. And when the test comes, what foundation will you have built your life upon? What foundation will you have built the lives of your family upon? What materials did you use to build your family? Now, it's important to note that even then, people built with wood, hay, and straw, and these materials provided decent homes. But his point is comparison. Do you want to build an average house with an average lifespan? Or do you want to build a house of extremely great value? Now understand, we're talking about the moral nature, the character nature, the spiritual nature of your family and your home. You see, let me give you an example. There, there are many great things to gain from watching a good movie together, not the least of which is the buttered popcorn you get to eat when you're watching. Now, y y there's a lot to gain from playing on sports teams. There is a lot to gain from learning how to play an instrument. Whatever your family does or does for fun, all of those things have advantages that can be a blessing to all of your connection with one another and your connection to others. But nothing prepares a family better for the heated tests that will come than studying his word together then praying together, then worshiping regularly together with the entire body of Christ, serving in ministry together, sharing your faith story with others together and with one another. All of those things are the building blocks that give you a beautiful, extravagant home 
that lifts up Jesus and honors God the way he created you to do. I, I, I just, it was so interesting to me a few years ago to watch my, uh, Stephanie, my wife Stephanie's mother, uh, walk through the journey of her husband's cancer and then ultimately his death. And I, I watched a woman who was building her life upon her faith in Christ, and yet all of the things spinning through her mind as she was walking this road, till ultimately Joe uh, was in that place where now Elsie had a decision to make. And would she uh, go with what Joe had decided and she knew Joe would want, which was to not remain on life support, and she, be, she began talking to me about that. We have prayed, she said. We've prayed for years. You know, why hasn't God healed him? And all of the questions and all of the doubts that all were real, and yet I watched this woman who had built her faith over the years on the word of God, on prayer, on worship, on connection to other Christian believers sitting under teaching, and I watched her declare to the glory of God, to God be the glory, and I trust him. And because that storm came, that, that fire came in her life, she found herself able to hold on to that which is the most important thing to her, even as she was tested. And so I told her that I was going to share this today. I asked her if I could. She gave me permission. Hey, Grammy, thank you so much for being part of this and reminding us that when you build your house on a solid foundation of faith with materials that last forever, your prayers, your study of God's word, you can face any trial, any test, when the fire comes. It wasn't easy for her or any of us, but I'm here to tell you we triumphed over the doubts, we triumphed over the attacks because he is real and we found him to be real. Now, tests present themselves in many different forms. Are you ready for them? Is your house built upon a solid foundation of solid faith in a solid source? Are you building with the best materials of wisdom and worship and the word and witnessing to others and your connection with the body of Christ? Today, I'm here to tell you if you're a family of one or you're a family of ten, if you just got married or you've been married for, for, for 75 years, um, all of these things can be built upon with faith. And so I'm asking you, what foundation are you building your life upon? What foundation are you building your house upon? For individuals, it starts with a desire to know the design of God. And that's why the writer of Proverbs said it this way in Proverbs 24. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Through wisdom. And you only get that kind of wisdom Spiritual wisdom, when you dive into the Word of God and gain knowledge of what it's teaching you. Men and women, time is short. And so it's time to get serious and build your house on a solid foundation. Time to respond to that calling is now. Because maybe you found that in your life you've drifted from this reality, that you have connected more with worldly things, and you've found yourself gravitating more toward the stuff of life. And instead, today, perhaps God has helped you to put the brakes on all of that. 
and take inventory of what you're building upon. And maybe today, today would be the day that you start fresh and new and decide you're going to build your house on that solid foundation of faith in Jesus Christ. Today is the day to start building. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the hope that you give us, the promises that you've provided. We're confident today that you want what's best for us and you want to help us live our lives with purpose for your glory. So thank you for causing us to pause and reflect. And I ask, O oh Lord, in this moment, that you will help men and women to get serious about the, their lives moving forward. And that you would help them make a decision today that they're going to start building for you. So speak to us and show us what areas of our life we need to cast off and what areas of our life we need to put on. Show us, Lord, how to build on your foundation. Would you take time right now and respond to what you've heard? Tell him, Lord, this is it. This is the moment. I'm going to start fresh and new. Change my heart and give me new desires to live my life for you. You respond in prayer right now. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers and do a work in us. Show us how to live our lives and build our homes for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, we're going to sing a song here, and maybe today would be a good day for, for you to come or, or couples to come or families to come. Kneel here at these altars or these stairs. For those of you who are at home, maybe it's time for you or your family to kneel down by the couch and say, together, we are going to build this house on a foundation that gives God glory. As we sing, let's stand together. You come and you pray as God leads you.
So happy Mother's Day. And moms, I hope you'll go out to the pillars there by the hub, and there's a little gift for you there, a little bag that I hope you can use. And if you can't, go ahead and take one and give it to another mom in your life as a gift to them from us. Um, also, if, uh, as we heard in the announcements, baby bottles are out there for you to throw your change in between now and Father's Day so that we can support CareNet, who is helping to counsel women who have found themselves with unexpected pregnancies and to offer as much help as possible. We want to help them help uh, pregnant women. So um, if you could uh, take one of those bottles and fill it up over the next uh, few weeks and then bring it back in, we'll make sure we get that to CareNet. And then finally, for those of you who have children, grandchildren, uh, neighbor children, we're signing up today for Vacation Bible School, a great place for them to hear about Jesus and give their hearts to the Lord. So all of that stuff is happening. It's that time of year, and we're, we're thrilled to be experiencing all of it. Those of you who are with us online, thanks again for being here today. Um, we hope you'll stick around for just a minute as Carrie talks a little bit more about how you can respond to what you've experienced today at Southland. God bless you. Have a wonderful week, and happy Mother's Day to you.